Lecture 1, Module 1, Origins of Six Sigma. I personally feel that it's important to understand where Six Sigma came from. It is not a new thing. You know, many of the tools in Six Sigma and a lot of the practices have been around for a long, long time. And it's good to understand where all these things come from. First, the word statistics, interestingly, is derived from the Latin statisticus, referring to state affairs, and is from the Latin word status, or state. The origin of statistics are kind of murky, but they clearly lie in the desire of early states to understand their populations so that they could tax them more efficiently. The Romans, for instance, took censuses and over time births, deaths, marriages, and etc. began to be recorded. And this was the very beginning of what we would call descriptive statistics today. And descriptive statistics has a, an origin uh, in John Grant. He was the very first uh, demographer, if you will, and he developed statistical and census models that became uh, used in today's uh, demographics. Uh, he probably created the very first life table, which showed the probability of surviving to various ages at that time. Uh, he had a book uh, called Natural and Political Observations made upon the bills of mortality, and in it he tried to analyze the death records of London to create some kind of system that would provide an early warning based on these deaths uh, that when bubonic plague was starting to hit the city. Uh, Grant's book really became the first statistical estimate of the population of London, and the Six Sigma concept that we owe to uh, John Grant is uh, descriptive statistics. Johann Carl Friedrich Gauss is a very well-known German mathematician and scientist, and he contributed to many, many fields. Uh, most of us know a lot about him. And he also includes statistics. His name is associated with many, many concepts in science and mathematics. And the Six Sigma, six sigma concept we owe to him is normal distribution. Carl Pearson is another mathematician. He's credited with establishing really classical statistics as we know it today. Uh, and he even founded the world's first statistics department in 1911. And he introduced quite a few statistics that are used in Six Sigma, the standard deviation, correlation coefficient, the p-value, very, very important, Pearson's chi-square test, and principal component analysis. Also, Ronald Fisher, he's very well known for many contributions uh, in statistics. And most importantly, he wrote a very innovative book, The Design of Experiments, in 1935. Uh, which is still being discovered and read about and thought about today. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry is also uh, struggling with the use of design experiments uh, almost 100 years later. And some of the, the Six Sigma concepts from him are the design of experiments, the analysis of variance, and the F distribution. Another very important name is uh, Walter Schuhart. Uh, he was a physicist and engineer who was considered you know, by many to be the father of statistical quality control. Uh, Dr. Deming said of him, as a statistician he was, like so many of the rest of us, self-taught. And that's probably what you will be. Schuhart developed uh, control chart techniques that helped to distinguish between what we call assignable causes and random causes or chance cause variation. Schuhart stressed that bringing a production process into a state of statistical control is really absolutely necessary to, predict, to be able to predict future output and really to manage your process uh, economically. The concepts we owe to him uh, in this class are control charting, statistical process control, and of course common cause and special cause. And uh, <coughs> Dr. Ishikawa, uh, he was a university professor in Japan. He's uh, well known for the Ishikawa or fishbone or if you want to call it the cause and effect diagram that uh, is used in the analysis of processes and will be used in this class. Well, this is, although the Ishikawa diagram is his main claim to fame, he is considered to be the father of the Japanese quality control movement. movement. So in terms of Six Sigma in this class, the fishbone diagram, or Ishikawa diagram, uh, is what we owe to him, and we will use this in, this, in the class. There are a number of uh, quality pioneers that really started in the, in the middle of the uh, 20th century. Uh, Dr. Duran, uh, Dr. Deming, and Dr. Taguchi. Uh, the three of these really are probably credited with the, uh, the modern quality control movement uh, that is going on um, in the world uh, today, starting in the uh, 1950s going forward. And let's talk a little bit about the development of Six Sigma, uh, the directions that things, things were taking that led to Six Sigma. Uh, in 1940, uh, 40s, uh, during World War II, the U U.S. military uh, was struggling with getting good quality uh, materials, and they developed an inspection sampling technique which became known as the mill standards. Uh, they were around for many, many years. They, they don't exist anymore. They've been 
uh, basically transformed into the uh, ANSI standards. And um, this is where the concept of statistical quality control uh, arose. In the 1950s, after the war, Japan was turning to improving its quality to be able to compete with the United States. Uh, and they started implementing quality ideas of uh, Dr. Duran and Deming. And uh, they focused on improving manufacturing process to make uh, superior products. In the 1970s, uh, faced with the erosion of market shares by, uh, uh, by, by Japan, a lot of the United States companies were now starting to turn to statistics and, and looking to uh, total quality management as the answer to a lot of their quality problems. In the 1980s, <coughs> Motorola created the, t the concept or the, the program called Six Sigma as a statistically based process for the entire organization to get rid of defects in their production processes. They became keenly aware <coughs> that their processes were terrible and they needed to be improved. In the 1990s, Allied Signal followed them and became the second company to adopt Six Sigma as, as a program throughout their company. General Electric implemented a very successful company-wide program that is still in place today, and many industries began to follow them. In the 2000s, uh, with pharmaceutical companies facing a lot of price pressures uh, uh, from the government and from the, uh, uh, from the market itself, uh, some of them started to look to cost-cutting uh, using Six Sigma and lean manufacturing. And today, with statistical software now putting complex statistical calculations in the grasp of just about anybody, and with the interest in, in the application of Lean and Six Sigma in the pharmaceutical industry soaring, you enroll in this class.